Hey guys, welcome to NoCode Engineer and today we're going to learn how to build the login and signup functionalities in Bubble. To make the login and signup functionalities in Bubble, we're going to make use of a feature in Bubble called the custom states. Previously, I made a video on custom states in which I explain what a custom state is and I give an example of how to use custom states. I really advise you to watch that video first before proceeding with this one. All right, so let's get started and build the login and sign up functions. When you click on this drop down here, which show you all the pages that your website has, here at the bottom you can see a category called the reusable element category. Inside the reusable element category, you already have the header, the, the sign up login pop up pre built by Bubble. And what a reusable element is. It's just an element that you have to create once and then you can copy and paste it in any page of your website. Uh, for a function like sign up and login, which you have to use in every page of your website, it's really good to have it as a reusable element. So you just have to create it once and then you can just drag and drop it on your pages, just like any other thing, like a button. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to delete these features right here and I'm going to build them from scratch. All right, let's make a new reusable element. The first thing we'll make is a header. I'm going to name this element header. I'm going to click on create. Double click on it to reveal the property box. The first thing we'll do is adjust the width and the height of this uh, header. The width, uh, I'll adjust the width. I'll make it equal to the width of the index page, which is 980, because the header is going to be inside the index page. The width will be 980. Where is it? OK. All right. 980 there we go and height would be 85 okay it looks good and remember the type of element here is a group well you can leave it as a group or you can make it into a floating group uh, the good thing about floating group is that it's a group which uh, stays at a position at a particular position relative to your scroll you know right now it's uh, it will float relative to the top so whenever you scroll down the page the header will always be visible on the top for example right here you know this bar here it always stays at the top even when you scroll down now this is a floating group and the floating group that we are going to create is going to look like this it will always stay on the top even when you scroll down let's have two buttons here which will allow us to log in and sign sign up into the website all right I think I accidentally created a lot of buttons let me check how many do I have I have two okay and I'm gonna name this button sign up I'm gonna name this button log in there we have the header and two buttons for sign up and log in Let's create another reusable element and this will be the sign up, login, pop up. Click on create. Let's adjust the width and the height of this pop up. 50 probably and 400. This pop up is something that will appear when the user clicks on the sign up or login buttons. The type of this element should be pop up. And let's close this window. Let's create a group here. This group will be the sign up group. It will have all the inputs for the sign up form. Let's name it group sign up. Change the width. No, it's I think it looks okay. Close. All right, let's put some input boxes inside the sign up group. The first input box to collect the email from the users. Email sign up. The 
the content format would be email I'm gonna copy paste it here again and this input box will take the password from the users I'm gonna name it password sign up content format would be password and then I'll create another input box here just so that we can have a confirmation for the password password confirm sign up on the format is password and then let's have a button which the users can click to log in or sign up this button will be named sign up and also let's have a text box which says that if you already have an account you can log in alright and a text box here to say that it's a sign up form let's make it a bit bigger by clicking here and revealing the properties it's in center let's give a border to the sign up group solid and roundness could be five and the color will be light okay now first let's hide it and now create another group for the login this group let's name it group login all right so let's put some input boxes here to collect the email from the users it will be email login and the content format would be email and let's copy paste it here again to collect the password from password login content format would be password let's have a button here let's name it login and a text box which says that if you don't have an account you can sign up don't have an account sign up and you can have another text box here to say that it's a login group we can increase the font size center it all right now we have all the elements that we need to have in a login and sign up function also let's give it a group border a border solid maybe five color the same okay now as I said before we're gonna use custom state to make this uh, functionalities the first thing we'll do is double click on the group here on the login group go to conditionals define another condition and here we're gonna make a variable inside an element now you can choose any element to make the variable I'm gonna choose the pop-up here when sign up login pop-up create a new custom state that basically means create a new variable inside this element and I'm gonna name the variable I'm gonna name it variable one the type could be anything I'm gonna say let's say text create variable one is login then this element will be visible what I'm saying right here is when sign up login pop-ups variable one is login make this element visible I'm gonna have another condition which says that when this is not login when variable one is not login do not show this group so I uncheck this box I'm gonna do the same on group sign in I'm gonna hide it reveal group sign in double click on the group define another condition I'm gonna say when pop-ups variable one is now I'm gonna say sign up 
So what I'm doing here is I'm giving a value to variable one. I'm saying that when variable one has a value called sign up, you show this element. When it doesn't, when it doesn't, when variable one is not sign up, you do not show this element. Let's now let's give life to this text box here. Already have an account log in. So when a person clicks on this, he should be shown the login form. Now since this is a clickable element, we have to go to short edit workflow here and click here to add an action. Element actions set state. We're gonna set state of login pop-up. We're gonna select the variable one and change the value to login because this is the value we defined for the variable one so that the login form shows up. Whenever variable one is logged in, the login form will show up. Similarly, we'll go to the login group, click here, start edit workflow, and then we're gonna do the same. Element action, set state, on a login pop-up, custom state variable one. We're gonna say that when variable one has the value sign up, you take me, you show me this sign up form. Now let's give life to this button here. When you click on login, you should be able to log in. And that's what we're gonna do now. Go to accounts, log the user in, take the email from input email login, password from input password login. They logged in, yes, why not? Remember the email. Why not? Then we have to redirect the user to a different page and destination would be page two. We'll do the same with the sign up button. Hide it, reveal a sign up group, click on the button, start edit workflow, sign the user up, take the email from input email sign up. Take the password from input password sign up, not the confirmed password sign up. Now, click on require a password confirmation. Now you'll have a new input box here. Take the confirmation from input password confirm sign up. Uh, here you have an option to sign, send an email to confirm the email. What it does is it will send an email to the user and he will get a link which he can click and then he will redirect it to a page on your website. I'll make another video on how to use this function here, but for, for, for now, just to keep things simple, I'm not gonna use it. Remember the email? Yes, why not? I'm gonna close this and then let's redirect the user to a different page. All right, so now we have given life to all the functions that we have, all the buttons and the text boxes. Let's go back to the header here and let's give life to these two buttons here. What should happen when you click on these buttons? When you click on this button, something should pop up here, which should allow you to input some details and would will allow you to log in or sign in to your website. But when you click on the elements tree here, you can you can only see the header and two buttons here. There is nothing, there is no pop-up here, which will allow you to log in. So what we can do is, we just created a pop-up right now. We can just click on it and put it here. And now, when you, when you click here, you see you have the header, you have the buttons, and you also have the pop-up here. Let's give life to these buttons now. So we'll click on it, start edit workflow, when you click on sign up, you have to change the variable of the sign up login pop-up to sign up first, and then you have to tell Bubble to show you the pop-up. The first in the first step, we change the variable inside the sign up login pop-up, and then we tell we told Bubble to show the sign up login pop-up. And we're going to do the same with login, we'll create a start edit workflow, 
we're gonna change the custom state element will be sign up login pop up because that's where the variable one is the value now will be login and then we're gonna tell bubble to show us the pop up all right we're done making the functions now let's go back to the index page and let's stick our header here now keep in mind that you don't have to stick your pop-up again because remember the pop-up is already inside the header let's test the things that we just made click on preview all right before we test the buttons uh, you can notice that when I scroll down the header stays at the top this is because it's a floating group all right now let's click on sign up nice the pop-up shows up and the sign up group shows up let's click on login nice the login group also shows up does this text box work that works and this too let's try to sign up now Click on sign up. All right, it works. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I'll be back with more videos. Take care. Goodbye. See you soon.